Okay, so today what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to put images on uh, buttons. So if you can see here, I have a image of a cat, and I can show that to you. It's the PNG. Um, so I've got a few cats here. Uh, this is the one. This is the cat PNG one and I'm going to put this image on a button. And the reason why you're seeing this tile in the background is because it has a transparent background. So, uh, but however, before we kind of continue, I want you to take a look at the size of this image. 1,500 by 1,000 pixels. So obviously, uh, this is not the right size so we're gonna have to deal with that problem so first of all let me show you the code that I have and here's the code that I have to put this window uh, sorry put this picture on my button so the first thing that I've done is cr I've created a image object called pick which stands for picture and I'm calling flpng image to create that and I'm providing the file name which is in my directory so if you're wondering about flpng image let's go to the documentation here and we'll go up to classes and the class in index and we'll go to p here and where's p okay so it's up up here at the top of P. There it is, FLPNG image. And uh, I would say, like, the two, I actually prefer PNG uh, over JPEG. And um, however, if we look here, there are two constructors, or if I click here, you can see that there's two functions of the same name, which means these are how you create them. And that's exactly what I have typed here, right? FLPNG image. Be careful of the capitalization. The F, the P, N, the G, and the I are all capitalized. If you get that wrong, it's a common mistake. Okay? So notice here the capitalizations. Now, um, this here, do you remember what const char star was from last period? That's a string, right? So that means the file name has to be provided as a string. So therefore, notice the argument that I'm passing it is the file name, and it's in quotes. It's a string. So you understand now how I'm, how I'm reading the documentation. Okay. Now, if you're wondering about the other one, by the way, the second one here, this is actually reading it from memory. We're not going to do that. Um, but perhaps in another class we might do that um, now how many different types of images are there well a good way to kind of discover this is notice where this is inheriting from it's inheriting from FL RGB image which is inheriting from FL image if we click this one above oh now look it RGB images have bitmap BMP JPEG PNG and PNM. Okay? So there are a few different uh, ones that are supported. Again, my, my favorite one is PNG. Okay, so when I look for things, I usually look for a PNG. Okay, so back to our code. Now that we know how to create the image, Let's actually create the window here. So just for now, I'd like you to ignore these lines that I've commented out. Notice they have triple quotes around them. So just ignore them for now. And let's create the window. And then let's add a button to it. And the button's going to be 300 by 300. And it's going to start at the top left-hand corner, 0, 0. And then this is how I put the picture on the button. I go butt.image. So let's go take a look at that. 
in the documentation. And that's actually not a part of the button class. Okay, so if we, if we go into button here, we're not going to find anything that says image. Okay? It's alphabetical, so there's no image. So do you guys remember what, what you're supposed to do to try and find what you're looking for? Come over here and say, aha, FL button is inherited from widget. So let's click widget. And now let's go look for image. And sure enough, alphabetically, I got to do some scrolling here. There it is. Okay. This first one gets the image because there's no argument. And the second one sets the image. So now you'll notice that it requires an FL image, but that's exactly what we're providing it because FLPNG image returns an image. So this actually creates the FL image and we assign it now to this variable called pick. And then here we essentially say we want the button to have that image defined by pick. And so now if I run this, you'll see that it works. The problem is that the image is not the right size. The image is much too large. And so now we have to make the image the correct size. If you'll notice the dotted line here, that's where the button is. So now let's go back to our code. And so before I do this, there, there is a resizing method here. And let me show you how to use that. Uh, the resizing method is, let's go see um, back to PNG image here. Uh, classes, index, and let's go back to PNG image. And does it have a, the resize method here is called copy, but I don't see it here. There's only two of them. So let's go, like I said again, let's go up one level, and that's RGB image. And let's see if there's a copy here. There is. Okay, so let's click on copy, and it says uh, the copy method creates a copy of the specified image if the width and height are provided the image is and here's the important part is resized okay so therefore now I want to resize the image all right let's do that so all I have to do is call dot remember the two colons is a dot and what do I call the dot copy on on the image object and do you remember what the image object was it wasn't the button so here my image object is pick so therefore, I can just simply go like this. I can say pick equals, let's put a space there, pick dot copy. And then I'm going to say, now, I know that my button is 300 by 300. So let's go 300 comma 300. And in fact, I don't even need to leave that there. I could, and let's just, let's just run it and see what it looks like. Yeah, so what's what How do you guys feel about this? Are you do you feel okay about the way this looks? Mm, there's one problem with it, right? And that is well, see the inherent problem here is that our button is 300 by 300 and yet this image the aspect ratio of the image doesn't match the aspect ratio of the button which we've created. So this is a problem because now the Im I mean, if I if I did it even more to kind of make it look even more weird, I could try and um, let's say make the make this. Um, by the way, listen. How about this? Let's let's delete this line from here. And let's put it here. Now the reason why I'm going to put it here is because I'm not going to say 300 by 300. Instead, I'm going to say but dot width, and then I'm going to say but dot height. 
Now that is 300 by 300, but if I run this again, notice it's the same, but this time I'm, I haven't hard-coded the size of the image. The only thing I've hard-coded is the size of the button, which is 300 by 300. Um, there is an issue with this, though. There is an issue, and that is that the aspect ratio is wrong. So now, let's go and un... What we need to do now is we need to do a little bit of math. So let's take a look at... There's a... I've done some math here. Let's say that this is the original image, and the original image has a width and a height. Okay? The aspect ratio is the ratio of that width and height. So if we divide the width by the height, we'll get the aspect ratio of the image. Now if we wanted to get the, if we were provided the width, and we know what the aspect ratio is, how would we get the height? Well, we would just divide the width by the aspect ratio, and we'd get the correct height. Let's say, for example, if we're creating the button. And that's exactly what I do. When I create the button here, on the right-hand side, the smaller rectangle, then I say to myself, I want the width of this button to be 300, but what's the height going to be such that the aspect ratio is correct? And what I'll do there is look at the math. All I need to do to find the correct height is take that width, which in this case is 300, so let me just grab my pen here so you can see what I'm referring to. So in this case, this is referring to this. That's the correct width. And the aspect ratio, well, I have to calculate that by dividing the width and the height of the original image. And then I'll have the aspect ratio. And therefore, th this height is going to be the correct height of my button. So let's do the math. So now that you've kind of seen how I'm doing that, if I come over here and I say to myself, all right, well, notice the consistency, right, of the width of the picture is dot w, just like dot w for the button or any other thing that you're trying to calculate the width of. So pw is the picture width pH is the picture height. Then I'm going to print it, and I think it was, uh, remember we saw it in the image viewer, it was 1500 by 1054, or something like that. Then we're going to calculate the uh, aspect ratio of this image, and we'll divide that, all right? Um, and be careful, because in Python 3, when you do division, that aspect ratio is going to be a floating point number. So that's why in the next line, uh, I don't want, I cannot provide height values as a floating point. It has to be an integer. So when I go 300 divided by the aspect ratio, I'm actually going to be converting that into an integer first. Okay? Before I assign it to the butt height. Now, why is this important? Well, first, let's get rid of this line because we're doing the copy below. So let's go like this. Let's, we don't need that. And we don't need this line either now. We'll put a space there just to show that what we're separating. Now, here, when we create the button, we don't want the width to be 300. We want it to, sorry, not the width. We don't want the height of the button to be 300. We want it to be butt height, calculated on line 9. Then, when we resize the image with dot copy, we can use butt height here because that's, butt dot h is simply going to be the same as, so I mean, we could just do butt dot h here, or we could just delete it and just put uh, but h here as well. I think that's too many brackets though. Yeah. Okay. So now let's run it and let's see what happens. Ta-da! Now you see the button is the correct size 
to contain the image with the correct aspect ratio. All right, so the next topic we're going to hit is going to be callbacks. This is probably uh, one of the most important aspects of this GUI toolkit and any GUI toolkit. So what it is, is how do we get something to happen when we click on something? So in order to do this, we have to learn how a callback works. And a callback can be set for a widget. So in this case, I have, if I run this program, I just have a window and I have a, a button at the top left hand corner. Okay. And what I'd like to do is I would like to make a function that will execute when I click that button. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to define a callback. So here, I'm going to say but dot callback. And now I'm going to provide a function name. And for now, I'll just call it uh, a, a good kind of a uh, pattern or a practice to get into is to call it uh, the name of the widget and then you could say CB okay or you could put the CB first okay so now I have to define that function so this is a function name okay so I'll come up here and I'll go define but underscore CB and CB stands for callback now any callback function is going to actually accept a widget so I have to I don't it doesn't have to be called WID but it has to be have some variable uh, some argument that it accepts and it that argument is going to be the widget that received the event so here, for example, I could go something like uh, inside here, I'll go print and uh, something like OK. So now, if I run this program and if I click this button, notice it says OK here. Every time I click it, it says OK. And, but there's a lot more that I could do than just printing something. Wouldn't it be nice if I could, instead of printing something, I could also, for example, uh, change the color of the button. So in this case, you might think, okay, I could say but dot color and let's make it, um, how about FL green? And once again, we've gone over how to pick different colors. But if we run this now, look what's going to happen. And if I click it, it goes green. And it only goes green when I click it. So if you'll notice, it doesn't go green before I click it. It's gray. And when I let go, boom, it goes green. Okay? So now we've, we're learning how to make things happen. However, I will stop you right here and say to you, listen, here's a quick, here's a quick problem. Um, what, if we made, what if we made two buttons? Okay? So let's go, uh, let's make two buttons. Let's go but one and then and then let's go but two. And obviously here I'm going to have to make this at a different location so maybe we'll say we'll make this uh, how about 140 or let's see X and Y. Now let's leave this like this and then we'll let's make this 180. Okay. And I, listen, we could even we could even um, 
make put their names on them too. So let's just go. Uh, how about let's go one, and for this one let's go two. Okay, let's run it now. Now obviously this is going to fail because there is no such thing as bot. Now there's either bot one or bot two. So let's go. Let's go. Uh, but one and of course now there's no let's make a one here and let's run it uh, uh oh we did I put them on top of each other oh right 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 I did now the problem here is I'm messing with the size of it, not the location. That was my mistake. So how about we change this one to, uh, let's say, 50 x, y width and height. So let's now try it. Let's now try running it again. There we go. That's better. And now, if I click this one, it goes green. And if I click this one, nothing happens. Uh, I'd like both of them to go green when I click them. How would I do that? Think about that for a second. All right, so I think most of you guys have figured out that I essentially have to copy this line here. Oops. And obviously I have to change this to a 2. And now let me try running it. Ready? Here we go. If I click this, it goes green. If I click this, nothing happens. But wait, let me try running it one more time. Do you guys see what the problem is? Let's try running it again. This time, let me click this one. Hmm, it just says OK. So. In fact, let me actually put something else here. Let's go, yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. I think I know what's going on here. Before I do anything else, let's run it. And let me click this here, the second one. And you notice you think nothing's happened, right? Nothing's happened. And let's minimize it. <gasps> what? It went green. I had, all I did was minimize it and it came back. Watch this again. Let's try it again. It was magic. Let's try running it again. Ready? So what's going on here? This seems very fishy behavior here. So when I run this and I click on the second one, nothing seems to happen. And yet, when I minimize it and then I bring it back up, it comes back where the first one is green, not the second one. So what you see is going on is that by minimizing and re-maximizing, I'm actually redrawing the window. So if I was, to, at this point, to say but one dot redraw, see, it redrew the widget uh, when that widget was had the callback because it had to redraw it because it was clicked on. but here, notice that if I go but one redraw, now if I run this program, if I click this one, it should, it should go green automatically without having to minimize and maximize the window. The question is, this isn't the behavior that I want. I don't want the first button to be changed color when I click on the second one. And obviously, the problem here is that in this callback here, I have but one here. So perhaps I should just change this to a two. Would this work? The problem now is it's not going to work because now it won't work for the first button. So you can see this is not a good way of doing things. And by the way, the reason why this works in the first place is because you can access variables 
outside of a Python function, unlike other languages like C++. Python has the ability to access variables if they're not local. How do we determine if a, if a variable is not local? Well, we don't have anything like but1 equals or but2 equals. Therefore, but1 and but2 are not local. Therefore, it'll go and find the global instance of those. And it works. But it's not the right way to do things. Instead, I want you to take a look at this variable right here called WID. What is that? Well, it's, the, it's a Python object. It's the widget. It is passed to this function because it's a callback function. And it was the widget which received the event. So watch what I'm going to do. I will do this. Wid dot color and green. So I'll change. I can actually, I should be able to get away with just getting rid of this line. And now, notice both button 1 and button 2 have the same callback, right? And now when I run it, if I click the second one, the second one goes green. And if I run it again, if I click the first one, the first one goes green. So in other words, it works for both. In essence, what I'm doing here, and this is a really powerful feature of FLTK, what it's, what I'm allowing to, what's, what it's allowing me to do is I am acting on the widget that is passed to the callback function by ca calling dot color on it. And that widget is the widget which received the click event from the mouse. And that's why it's so amazing. So in essence, I could now, for example, have hundreds of widgets with the exact same callback. And they would all work perfectly. So let's show you how to do that. OK? So uh, let me explain this in one other way as well. Essentially, what WID is it's behaving as but1 or but2, depending on which one I click on. All right, so our next objective is to make a whole bunch of buttons in a grid. And let's try and have the same callback for all of them. The question is, how do we make a grid? So let's kind of um, clear this here. And let me draw a grid for you. So let's say this is our window. And I think our window in our code, OK, so our code is, uh, our window is 400 by 400. Now, I want a grid here, like this. And I want lots of these buttons. So something that looks like that. And I'm going to make each individual button, let's say, 40 by 40. So question, ask yourself, uh, how many buttons am I going to have horizontally, and how many am I going to have vertically? How many times does 40 go into 400? Great, so that's 10. So that means I'm going to have 10 rows. Okay, so these are rows, and I'm also going to have 10 columns, and that's this vertical is a column. So let me show you how to write this as a, a code. Okay, or the trick here obviously is obviously 10 by 10 is the hun is a hundred widgets I'm going to have now, but. I would be insane to try and type this or even copy paste this a hundred times. That's, that's not the proper way to code. So let's, first of all, uh, let's actually get out of this and copy paste this, or not copy paste, but. Um, 
So our code here that we used was callback one. Let's call let's let's copy this callback one to uh, callback two. Okay. Now we can go ahead and uh, edit callback two. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out these two lines. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of buttons. So let's call it LB. And a list obviously is going to look like that. That's my list of buttons. Now, I'm going to have to go into a nested loop here. So I'm going to say for, how about let's go row in range 10 and for column in range 10. Now I'm going to append lb.append now what am I going to append to that list? Well, I'm going to append FL buttons. Now I have to create these buttons. So what do I need? Well, I need the X and the Y location. And then I'm going to need the width and the height. Now the width and the height, I know what that is. That's simply going to be 40 by 40. The question now is, what is the x and the y going to be? So I'll pause the video here and I want you to think and replace x and y with a mathematical formula which will make each successive button appear in the correct location based on the variables row and column. Here, before you actually do this, uh, let's do something just to make this look a bit better. Let's put numbers on them. Uh, so let's say here, I know we usually start from, actually, yeah, let's start from zero because we're computer scientists. We're not going to start from one. So let's say num equals zero. And then after we append something, uh, let's go num plus equals one. So we're we're incrementing num, but here after the uh, size, let's say, let's put num here. But remember, num is an integer, and we cannot we cannot uh, provide an integer as a title. It has to be a string. So uh, let's convert that into a string before we uh, send it as the label. So let's try this now. Uh, I think some of you may have figured out that x and y have to be something times row and column. Now, obviously, this line here, range 10, is going to start from 0, which is good. That's what we want it to. So therefore, um, if here we say x, let's say x is um, column times 40 and y is row times 40. Let's see what this looks like. Uh-oh. It says but one is not defined. That's right. We didn't delete these guys. Let's delete these guys here and let's run this. Okay, that worked out nicely. So this is actually, you know, I'm surprised how many people have difficulty with doing such a simple type of a loop in terms of the mathematics. Look at how this worked out. Worked out perfectly. And there are, you know, there's, there are toolkits which do this kind of thing for you. Personally, I don't find this hard at all. So remember, the column here is going from left to right. So th that's our x value. 
and the row is going up and down. The rows are going up and down, so that's our y value. So that's what I just multiplied by 40. And it's nice that this starts off at 0 because then it works out perfectly. OK? So that's it. Now we've got all our buttons. Now what we need to do is we need to specify our callback. Now the question is, we don't have, we haven't even de defined a but to, like how can I say but dot callback when there is no but? Everything's inside this list of buttons. Well the answer is, it's a really awesome technique I'm going to show you right now. And essentially what I do is I go lb negative 1. What that means is that's the last one that I created. That's the last thing, object in my list. And I just created that on the line above. So now I can specify the callback for it. And now I'll say this, the callback is but cb. And I'll get rid of this OK here as well. OK? Now, notice that every single button, all 100 buttons, have the same callback. And, uh, and now if you're wondering what WID is, it depends on what button you, call, what, what, what button you click. So therefore, now when I run this, now look what happens. I click on this one and it's green. I click on that one and it's green. So you see, this functionality is fantastic. And look at this. I mean, this is the beginnings of perhaps some type of a game or something. And I've, it's so, the, the code is so short. It's a, it's a really wonderfully elegant toolkit. And that's why I really enjoy teaching this. It's so efficient. Um, there you go. All right. Um, there is one thing that I'm not, I forgot to mention, and let's mention that right now. And that is that the callback can actually pass an optional argument. So if we go and look at the documentation, so let's go take a look at callback. So this callback is actually part of widget. In other words, all um, widgets are able to have a callback. So if we come here and we go to callback, and it's right there, OK? Gets the current callback. That's not the one we want. Sets the current callback. Now you'll notice that there is the first part is a callback function. So this callback, fl callback star, is the name of the function. That's what this is, OK? Now, oops, let me go back here. I clicked on that. But this second part, void star p, this, this is actually, I don't want to get into the C++ explanation of what void star is, but essentially it can be anything in Python. So and this is really, really helpful sometimes. This works fine, but if I actually go comma here, for example, and I, for example, I pass uh, num, OK? Let's say I pass num to it. Let's get rid of this part. Okay, there. I hope I have right. No, I think I messed up. I need one more bracket here. There. So now I'm passing num up here. Okay. Not only do I want the color to be green, but I'd also like this widget's label to turn into a string of what it, the second argument I pass to it. So I, if I'm passing a second argument to it, 
How about, I'll just call it x here. You can call it anything you want. It doesn't matter. You don't have to call it num. You guys know Python already. But here, if I say string x, now if I run this, look, look what the difference is. So notice, here's the cool part. I want to make this clear. I'm not, I'm not providing one argument in the callback. I'm providing two arguments. The first argument is the name of the function. The second argument is the variable or the object that I'm passing after the widget that receives the event is. So in other words, this callback function is now receiving two objects. One, what uh, widget received the event, and two, the num that I'm passing in the callback. And notice num is always changing too. So watch what happens now. When I save this and I run this, now there's nothing that's, there's not, none of the numbers are visible, but when I click on it, not only does it turn green, but it also shows what number it is. Okay? And that number is actually determined when I click on it because that number is being passed to the callback function as I'm clicking on it. It's not predetermined. Okay? That's pretty cool, hey? And this last one should be 99. Wonderful. What an excellent example. Now the one thing that I do want to add to this is that if you'll notice in the documentation there is only one optional argument. I cannot pass as many things as I like. So for example, if I come back to my code, what if I try to do this? Just for fun, let's go uh, comma, let's pass the number three. Is that, can, I, can I pass that to another variable? Let's try running that. And it says, Wait, I should have gotten an error. Ah, and I did. So when I clicked on it, I get it says error. It says missing one required positional argument. Why? Well, it, this isn't going to work. So now, now your question is, oh gosh, am I only limited to one optional argument? What if I need more? The answer, of course, anyone who understands Python, that's not a problem, right? Because at this point, you could simply change this, instead of it sending one argument as num, you could turn it into a list and send as many things dot 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 as you want in the list and it, essentially you're only sending one list as that argument to x. So answer, you can send as many things as you want in the callback function if you stick them all into a list or a tuple. Either way, that's fine. But officially, there's only one optional argument that comes after the function name in the callback definition on line 15. Okay, so at this point, some of you are probably saying, all right, well, everything looks pretty good. Yep, I think that's really great. But what about trying to make the window bigger? Or smaller. I can't, you know, usually when I have a window like this and I try to make it bigger, I drag, but it doesn't seem to be working here. Are all these widgets going to stay the same size? Or are they going to resize? Gosh, uh, I don't think that's possible. It's not that advanced, is it? Well, some other toolkits actually require uh, annoying things. But this one, I think, I like the way FLTK works. So watch, watch, what, watch what I do. Um, under window, let's go, let's go back to window. And window doesn't have anything about, so hold on. Let's go back to uh, here, W. And 
window doesn't have anything about resizable or resizing here because I can look there it's alphabetical and uh, there's a resize but that resizes the window itself I'm not I'm not trying to resize the window manually I'm trying to resize the window by dragging it uh, so if I now go back and let's go up to FL group which is the parent of FL window and now Let's take a look at the methods here. And to do ta-da, there's one called resizable. And so in this, in this way, we can actually specify here. So if I click this, uh, actually, let's click. How can I get to this one? Uh, yeah, resizable. The resizable widget defines the resizing box for, for the group. So this is actually a really powerful feature here of FLTK. And they actually have a better documentation, I think, in the, um, in the next uh, version in 1.4. So let's actually go to the, don't usually do this, but I'll go to the FLTK website and I'll show you I'll show you the uh, one point. Where's one point four here? Here it is, HTML online, and right here it says, "How does resizing work?" Now, one one point three five doesn't have this documentation, so if you if you can, I'm not going to read through this. I will leave this as an exercise for you to do, but I would like you to read this. How does resizing work? Read through this, and they give a really good explanation as to uh, how resizing works. But I'm going to show you it as, as an example. So please don't skip over this. I think it's a really good explanation of, of how it works. I just wanted you to see that because I can show you that when you go to the main page for 1.35, it doesn't exist here. So you'll have to actually go to the main page of 1.4 and notice here it says, how does resizing work? It's after common widgets and attributes. But here, after common widgets and attributes, it's designing a simple text editor. So they've changed it in the new documentation. I really recommend you read that, how does resizing work? It's really wonderful. But let's go back to our code and look how easy this is going to be for me. Ready? I'm going to say, now remember, since the window is a group, I can specify which widget in the group is resizable. So watch what I do. I'll simply say win.resizable, no E there, and now I get to specify the widget which resizes. And you know which widget I'm going to pick? Watch, I'm going to pick win. That's the group itself. So now, when I run this, ready, look. Now you might say, okay, well, bring your mouse down. Notice now I can drag it, and look what happens. It's perfect. All of them resize perfectly with one line of code one line of code okay and I can in fact I can even make it full screen like that and it still works perfectly so for me this is really dandy and I think it's a really elegant one line solution to making things resize perfectly is you resize you set the resizable widget to the group itself. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do today is we we realize how we are able to, you know, have this thing resizable and great it works. But wouldn't it be interesting if we could resize it and yet 
have the window get bigger, but all the widgets that we have created stay the same size. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So now there might be ver a variety of reasons why you might want to do this because you might have some other widgets that you want to resize, but you want these ones not to resize. So the way to do this is we're going to actually be creating a FL group inside the window. Okay, so we could say G equals for group, okay, so we'll just use lowercase here. How about we just say g equals, uh, well, actually, this has got to be inside begin. So we'll go, well, let's use capital G here. And we'll say fl group. And now this group is going to start in the window at 0, 0. And it's going to be the same size as the window, 400 by 400. Okay? Now, what we're going to say is we're now, so now we're going to add all of these guys uh, to the group. So in order to do that, we're going to say uh, group.begin. And then here, we're going to say group.end. So essentially, we're adding the group to the window but now inside the group, we are adding uh, all of these buttons. Okay? So let's run it again. And you'll see that there'll be no errors, or there shouldn't be any errors. And it's, it seems to be uh, the same type of situation. And I can, I can sure make this thing bigger still. Yeah, that's right. But how can I make them not resize? So remember, every group, and a window is a group, right? Because window inherits from FL group. Every group can have one resizable widget. But look which one I'm going to set for the group. I'm going to go g dot. So I'll, I'll actually. Uh, now say g dot resizable, and I'll say none. And that means what I'm saying is I'll say no object inside of g is to is to be resized. So now watch what happens when I run this. Ready? The window is still resizable. Oops, sorry, I clicked outside of it. There we go. The window is still resizable, but as you clearly see, the, the buttons inside stay the same. They stay in the same location. So this is a super powerful uh, way of having the exact functionally, fun functionality that you desire, and there's obviously more uh, flexibility to it much more but I've just given you a flavor here and once again I would refer you to the documentations in the 1.4 documentations under uh, how to resi how does resizing work I think that's the best uh, documentation that I've read on it however once again I love it all I've done here is I've created a group inside my window, and I have added the widgets inside there. Here's my begin and my end, right? And then I specify for my group. I specify none of them are resizable, but I specify the window as being resizable. So the window can change size, but nothing inside the group changes size. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson today. We've covered quite a lot of uh, things today. And uh, I've really enjoyed this lesson. I think it was a good one. So I guess we'll see you 
next time.